Hello, this is Tristan Haskins from heartratemonitor.co.uk and this is a quick video review of what probably could be the two most popular GPS bike computers of the last few years. This is the Polar M450 and the Garmin Edge 25. As you can see, they are both small. Um, the M450, about the same size as the old Garmin Edge 400, and the Edge 25, are half the size. Key things with both these units is they have buttons. They do not have touch sensors screens. Uh, the M450 has four buttons around the base, up, down, back and backlight, and the Edge 25, similar, backlight, back menu, down through the menus, and then enter into the menus. If you want to see the actual full videos of each individual unit, please go back to heartratemonitor.co.uk and then go to the M450 review page or the Edge 25 review page to get more details. This is just a quick video to give you a comparison between the two. Okay, let's rock it on. Um, micro USB, Polar use micro USB, great. I like that a lot, it makes it a lot easier. It uses the same phone charger, same charger as my phone. Garmin doesn't, it uses its own bespoke cradle. So that's another cradle to add to the collection. Immediate um, main differences are, um, apart from the size, but in functionality, this, the Edge 25, does not support power. The M450 will if you use the Polar Look Keo power pedals. They'll both support cadence and heart rate and external speed sensors for on indoor bikes. Um, Polar works to Bluetooth Smart. So something like the um, uh, Polar H7 belt or any Bluetooth smart belt and the Garmin works to Ant Plus devices and accessories. They're both supported by good apps, um, Go Connect from Garmin, so yeah, Garmin Connect and Polar Flow. Similar quarter turn locking devices on both of them, but they're not compatible. So obviously they both come with their own bike mounts. Um, these Both these units are great value for money and they both are uh, a welcome products in this uh, quite crowded market of GPS bike computers. They're super simple to use. And um, for people looking for speed, distance and optional heart rate and cadence then they make very good um, options. The Polar has its buttons across the bottom one two three four and then this one on the front is the start button. Um, the Garmin has buttons all the way around the outside ready to go press start and then you can scroll through the different features. Um, Polar has this nice little touch here. It's not a headlight, but when you are in exercise mode and when the light goes low, we end up with this emergency light here, which is actually very handy, especially if you're commuting and your batteries have run out, you've got a little emergency light there. So it's not gonna get let you see where you're going necessarily very well, but it's definitely gonna get you seen. Obviously that's not something you'll find in the Garmin. It's a unique feature in the Polar. Who is going to buy which one. Um, an advantage in the Polar, what one thing that the Polar has that the Garmin doesn't have is if I go into the training diary and then go to a previous session, happens to be a running session but this that's another thing the um, M450 uses the same firmware as the Polar M400 so you can set up different profiles so you can set up a running profile if you want to and put this um, in your pocket when you go for a run and then you've got yourself a, a running computer. If you are multi-sport though you might as well buy the Polar M400. Anyway, um, 
what I wanted to show was this feature. This is unique to Polar and it is their training benefit. It tells me here the benefit of that session. What was the purpose of that session? What did I achieve? Um, as you can see, I'm not going to read it for you, but it tells me in plain English the benefits I can expect from those type of training sessions. Uh, and you know, a lot of people do train blind, they don't really know what they're doing. Polar are all about educating you to get the most out of your monitors to make sure you're not over training and under training. Also, when you upload this data to your Polar Flow, it will tell you how long it will be until you are fully recovered. And um, it's just very good at detecting um, training load patterns, over training and under training. Again, the Garmin doesn't do that. Not necessarily criticism, they're just different. So I have to be careful, I'm not trying to say one is necessarily better than the other. But for people who want some guidance in their training to know what the, uh, what the purpose of a training session was, then maybe the M450 might be better. They are, as you can see, very different sizes. But the display size really isn't that different. Um, Battery-wise, we'll get about 8-9 hours out of the Edge 25. The M450 will give quoted between 12 and 16 hours. Obviously, that does depend on the sensors, but they both do. So... Um, for most people, you know, a good long ride on a Saturday or Sunday might be 180 miles, 100 miles, so probably five, six hours. Both will be absolutely fine. You might be able to use the Polar for two days of long riding, but um, possibly not on the Edge 25. Um, data transfer from both of them is wireless and Bluetooth and simple, and it works perfectly well, very, very well. Again, sending the data to the Polar um, flow app and to the Garmin Connect app. Smart notifications, everything um, seems to be about smartphones. The M450 as it stands doesn't support smart notifications, so texts and incoming calls from your phone being sent messages to, you know, to, to scroll across the display. Excuse me, um, the Polar V800 does that now, and I'm sure it's just a firmware fix or patch that will make it the M450 do it. The Garmin S25 does it already. So um, while you're riding, if somebody texts you or calls you, you will get a scrolling message telling you that they are um, you've been contacted. Um, the M450 has a nice feature for when you're out and about. It's got a get there back to start. So you've been out for a bike ride, somewhere you don't know, it will show you with a compass arrow which way is home and how far it is to get to home. So you can use that to follow your way back home. Edge 25 doesn't have that. Um, both of them have an ability to follow a pre-ridden course. Um, again, it's not a mapping feature, it's just a track feature. So in here, I can go to ride, I can go down to ride mode and do follow course and now I've got a couple of courses in there it will then take me to the start of the course and then um, I'm not going to see it now because I haven't got a GPS but across the top it will show me the progress to the end and um, here it will show me with an arrow um, a, a very basic uh, breadcrumb trail map of um, where I'm going and when I need to turn left and right in the um, in the M450, I have a feature in here called Favourites. And again, a favourite, uh, I haven't put any in here, I'm sorry, but a favourite would be a pre-ridden ride with a name. And I can call it up in here. And again, it will take me to the start. And then it will give me left and right. And again, a, um, a breadcrumb trail of um, which way I need to be going to follow that particular route. So... Um, I mentioned power, this supports it, the Edge 25 doesn't. They'll both give cadence, heart rate and indoor speed off from their sensors. Um, I know that the Edge, so the Polar M450 has barometric pressure sensor to give it more sensitive altitude data. I think the Edge 25 does. I'm basing it on these holes on the back here. Um, 
but I will confirm that. So yeah, they're both great. They're both good value for money. Um, I'd be happy with both. I'm testing them both side by side. Uh, Polo at M450 Edge 25. Please visit heartratemonitor.co.uk if you're thinking of buying one and follow our links because um, we get a small bit of referred commission if you buy through our, our preferred partners. heartratemonitor.co.uk. Uh, thank you for watching this video.